Much of high grade karate is built on symbol combinations that are put together, strung together to make sequences. Once you've got your basic techniques, you've got your basic kihon of striking, blocking, and kicking. You've got to start to put those together into flying combinations. Combinations have got to make sense according to offensive and defensive strategies, whether it's just attacking or whether it's blocking then attacking. It's important to have exactly what you want as an outcome in mind. We can start with simple versions of these. We must start simple in terms of our ability to move and strike move and block and thinking about these things coming at the same time. Once you've got your offensive techniques, you start to then apply offensive with defensive capability. So you attack but at the same time keep your mind clear to be able to block. Once we've blocked in a defensive situation, what do we then do? Do we follow it through with a technique, a strike, another block, a kick, a takedown, a throw? Broken into three simple stages. The first of these stages is to be able to attack positively and with intent. Our second stage is to move with a sequence of movements to be able to come in with a flurry of technique. The final stage of this is to be able to put together a combination that understands the relationship between you and your opponent. How does your opponent react when you come in with these attacks? Where do we put the attacks? Why do we put them there? And a strategy to make sure that we are overcoming our opponent's defense technique. So in terms of being able to attack confidently and strongly, there are three fundamental basics, three things you should really be working on. The first of these is a front kick, moving forward in stance. Start by taking good kamae, good position. Evenly distribute your weight, keep your hands up, and keep your intent forwards towards your opponent. Remember, all of these strategies are built for an opponent in front of you, so when you're practicing them, you should visualize that opponent. With a front kick, with my yi, practice bringing the knee up high. Bring it down towards the opponent. Start with simple measures. Start with simple things. But as you're coming through, get the knee high and then down. Once again, keeping your focus towards your opponent. When using my yi for kumite, or when you're fighting, you need to be able to project your energy forwards to push the foot into the target. We do this by extending the leg and the hip. Bring the weight forwards over the knee. Extend the kick out and down. Keep good head position. Remember a good head and hips rule. Keep the head over the hips at all times so as to not lose balance. So now nicely projecting the kick forwards now. The second basic technique to work on is that of a reverse kick. One of the most commonly used techniques in the world, it's also one of the most valuable in terms of your kumite strategy. Call a reverse punch simply because you're punching with the opposite arm to the leg that's forward. Start with good kamai. Once again, elbows in, arms up, good defensive position. Put the power through the legs. To practice this technique, work the front foot out. So we step, and punch. Keep your focus together. Remember the head and hips rule. Head over the hips at all times. When practicing basic gyakuzuki for kumite, reverse punch, work with two stances. For your beginning practice, step out into Zenkutsudachi, keep the back leg straight. Keep the body upright, pull the return hand back, push the hips through slightly. For more kumite application, practice dropping the back knee down and allowing the centre of gravity to drop. This allows the power to come into our legs so we can use them. In terms of our other hand, practice with hikite coming back, the return hand coming back, as per basics, good technique. Start the hand at the side, all the way back nice and tightly, and for basic preparation, pull all the way back. The other way to practice the reverse punch is to use hikite as a defensive hand. Allow to come up and practice for defensive application. We come to the third and final technique one of the most useful ones, the lunge punch. 
Junzuki or Izuki, depending on style. Starting with a simple basic version of a jab, Kizamizuki. We come out with our front foot and punch with the front hand. This is for closing the gap into, a, into an opponent and to draw his guard up. Use your head and hips rule, drive off the back leg and punch. For basic techniques, use Zenku Tsudachi. Remembering the essence of these is less on the formality of the technique and more on the focus and intent of, onto the target. Coming back through the back leg, bringing the back leg through for the changeover and allowing the opposite hand to come through. Or is it? The chasing punch. Remembering with all offensive technique, be careful of the danger zone. The danger zone is when you are with an opponent, you come into his strike zone, his striking distance. Most people spar at a safe distance from each other. The moment you close that gap, you come into a danger zone where they can strike. So with your techniques, practice by learning to step and punch, but you've got to develop it to the point where you're coming in behind the punch. Don't enter the danger zone without something. So the hand and the foot land at exactly the same time. Or well, sometimes even a little earlier for safety. Remember when working these techniques, your timing and your sense of presence at the end of the technique is important. At the end of a punch or a technique, this is a striking part of your body. In other words, your whole body has to put the power through the technique and into the target. When you're practicing your technique, don't run away from it. Allow your whole sense of focus and intent to come through. Good timing, good balance, good speed, and tighten the body through with the head over the hips.